Hello, my amazing first grade artists. This week, artists, is another catch up and free choice week, my friends. Now, as always, if there are art projects that maybe you need some more time to finish, please work on those this week, my friends. Okay? Make sure that you have at least our last two art projects turned in. Our last two were our op art weaving and our Greek vases. So make sure you have those both turned in with photos, my friends, on either Seesaw or Artsonia. If you do have both of those assignments finished, my friends, then, of course, you can choose to do a free choice project. Remember, free choice project is all about what you decide to make. And as always, it is optional. If you just need a break this week, or maybe are going on a family trip and need to take off, that is okay as well, my friends, okay? Also, if you'd like to use your paint set this week for your free choice project, you can. Please just make sure you don't use your white. We need that white for a later project, okay? Now, artists, if you would like to attend the live art classes this week, we're going to be looking more at op art, just like how we talked about this past week in our weavings. Op art means optical, so it's about tricking the eye. And during our live art classes this week, I'm going to be teaching my friends that join a little bit more about op art. We're going to look at some examples of optical illusions, and we're going to draw our own. If you would like to come to the lesson, all you'll need, my friends, is a white piece of paper, a pencil, and either a black marker, Sharpie, or black crayon, okay? So I'll look forward to seeing some friends for some op art. I'll look forward to seeing all of your amazing free choice work. And as always, my friends, please make sure you have all of your other two art projects turned in first because I would love to see those two as well. All right, first graders, I will see you next week to start a new art project together, friends. For now, here's my BYE and have fun creating artists. Let's take a closer look at op art today. So the first question we need to ask is, what is op art? Op art, also known as optical art, or of the eye optical, was an art movement that started around the 1960s. Why was it made? Many artists during that time wanted to make art that would kind of trick the eyes and the brain. And by tricking us, it would often look like the art, therefore, was moving, or maybe even three-dimensional, like it was maybe popping out of the picture, or sometimes even falling back into it. How this was achieved or how this was made, using paint or drawing these pictures, artists would use these elements of art. They would use lines, shapes, patterns, and colors to help create this visual effect. So let's look at three op artists right now. The first one I want to look at is Bridget Riley. Bridget Riley is a British artist and a member of the op art movement. She is still actually alive and working in London today but she was a painter who was best known for her black and white paintings. She would use geometric precision, that means clean shapes and lines, to help really create the optical effects that she was known for. And it was while she was working as an art instructor in the early 1960s that she developed her signature op art style and technique. The second artist I'd look to, like to look at is Victor Vasarly. Victor Vasarly was a French-Hungarian artist, and he is often credited as being the grandfather or even the leader of the op art movement. And that's because back in Paris in 1930s, he was working for an ad agency as a graphic designer when he started making works, including his work Zebra, that was considered to be one of the earliest examples of op art. And he actually experimented in many different styles before arriving at his own checkerboard kind of pattern, as you can kind of see here. But he was really, really great at utilizing things like shapes and colors to create the illusion of spatial depth or making things kind of look like they were either popping out or pulling back into the painting, as you can see in these examples here. The last artist I'd like to look at today actually isn't technically an artist, or when he began, he wasn't an artist. He was a professor of psychology at the College of Letters in Kyoto, Japan, and that is Akiyoshi Kyotoko. 
His artwork, as you can see here, came after his 1991 doctorate and PhD, when he began specializing in visual perception and visual illusions. He began then using shapes, bright colors, and kind of this illusion of motion in his artwork to create what are now known as his rotating snakes. As you can kind of see in this first picture, you see those little forked tongues that kind of come out of those spirals. And he almost created artwork that is kind of sometimes tough to look at, friends, but I want to look at two examples even just a little bit closer just so you can see the movement. So here is another one of his pieces of art. And if you look away or kind of scan over the image, you can see how these leaves kind of feel like they are floating and waving, almost like there's a breeze blowing through or they're rocking on maybe some water. So that's one example. And here is the last one, my friends. I want you to kind of look, put your eyes, start kind of in the middle, and then move your eyes to one side, either the left side or the right side. And it should almost appear like this piece of artwork is kind of spinning. And again, these are all just different examples of optical illusions. Of course, none of these artworks are really moving, my friends. They are just painted using those different elements, those lines, shapes, colors, patterns, to help trick our eyes, and trick our brains into thinking that the impossible could actually be happening. So thank you for taking a look with me today, a little bit closer at op art. I hope you enjoyed it, friends.